wet on wet watercolour. What is it and how do you do it? That's what I'm going to show you in this video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find art tips and techniques, business and social media training for artists, so please do consider subscribing and if you hit the bell notification, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. So apart from it being a really beautiful technique, why would you use this in your paintings? Well, there's several reasons. Firstly, it's a texture technique, which means that if you've got an area where you've got texture, for instance, a field, and you don't want it to be just flat green grass, then you can use this um, very effectively. It can often look like grasses and foliage, so you can use it for texture. Another reason to use it is to have things um, in a kind of a soft focus. So if you want to, if you've got some crisp flowers in the foreground, and you just want to hint that there are other flowers in the background and get that kind of effect that photographers get all the time where the background is in soft focus it works really well using wet into wet as well the easiest way of explaining how to do wet into wet painting is just to show you so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to point the camera down at my drawing board where i've got a painting on the go and i'm going to explain to you how to use this useful technique in your own paintings so here's the painting I'm working on currently, which is a beautiful white camellia flower. Um, so I'll drop in a couple of photographs of the, uh, the original photo I'm working from. This was actually something I saw in real life. I went to visit a public gardens with a friend of mine and I saw this beautiful flower and I photographed it. So it's just not some, uh, some random photo that I took off the internet. I think it's quite important to use your own photos and to have kind of... Um, where you can to have an experience of the thing in real life, even if you're actually making the painting from a photograph. So what I want to do in this painting, as in all my paintings, is, is I'm going to use a slightly limited palette. In other words, I'm going to stick to um, the same colours that I've already used wherever possible. So I've already used in here some rather warm yellows. So um, I've used a cadmium yellow light, which is um, this one here. And I'm not going down as much as, as lemon yellow because I want to get that kind of sunshine look. And this slightly warmer yellow is better than this greenish one. It's rather got rather a lot of paint in at the moment, but um, even without the paint in it, it's greenish anyway. So I'm going to use this yellow here. Although you might not be able to see that yellow in my painting, I actually mixed the, uh, the grey from it. So I'm sticking to that kind of limited palette. And I'm going to mix it with um, some cerulean blue, which again I've also used to mix these greys and lilacs here. And I'm going to add Prussian blue simply because I'll know I know that I'll need to use it later on when I paint the leaves because I want those strong dark leaves. Now, where I've drawn the uh, the leaves here, you can see that I've kind of the paper is almost divided up into background areas, and that's really helpful with painting. It takes a little bit of the pressure off. Now, I'm not going to pre-wet these areas before I start um, for several reasons. Firstly, it dilutes the paint, and secondly. I won't have as much control. I can't sort of easily go up to the edge of things. Now, I have done a whole video about when you should wet and not wet your paint, um, your paintings, because beginners often get into a lot of trouble with pre-wetting, and they tend to just sort of, they've seen people um, pre-wet areas, so they tend to do it all the time. It doesn't always have the best results. So although I'm going to work wet into wet, you might be surprised to learn that I'm not actually going to pre-wet the paper here. I'm just going to work in with very wet paint and wet colours. So I think I'll start on this large area here. Um, I want to kind of uh, preserve these uh, these very light areas. So I'm going to be working sort of fairly, fairly light here. I've just noticed there's a bit of pink on my paintbrush. I don't know what it's doing there, so I'm just going to give that a rinse off camera. So I'm going to start by putting a little bit of, of clean water on the paper just so that... Um, I've, I've got some, you know, some, some damp area to start with. What I don't want is the paint drying the second it hits the paper and the way to avoid that happening is just to use a very wet paintbrush. So I'm going to go straight in and I'm going to put some yellow on the paper. It's a beautiful bright sunny yellow. So I'm just going to start off by dropping that in. Now as I said the, uh, the light in this photograph is over to the left so I want to keep these areas fairly light and leave lots of uh, lots of areas of, uh, of this light yellow and maybe even some areas of white paper but I'm not going to uh, to let those areas be dry I'm going to use clean water for that so first of all I'm just going to start I've got a bit of cerulean here now cerulean can often look like sky as well so that's something nice to add to your painting too so what I'm doing here 
is I'm keeping this edge wet and just going up to the edge of the leaf like this. So generally a good idea to put the background in fairly early on um, and to leave dark colours till last. Not only can you judge the tones more easily, but dark colours tend to run when you paint near them. So um, I want to get those uh, these lighter areas in first. So I've put the flower in first and then I'm going to get these light areas here. I'm going to just keep prodding at this edge so that I don't let it dry out. Now you've got two um, options with the background like this. You can either let the water sit unevenly in puddles and get some sort of back runs and drying lines appearing, or you can be a little bit more smooth with your painting and spread it out a little more and just stop those puddles sitting on your paper. And what that will do is it means that you'll get these wet into wet blended areas but you won't get any actual puddles. So I'm going to use um, a bit of Prussian, but I'm not going to overdo the Prussian because, to be honest, we're going to have a lot of that in the leaves. And I don't want the, the background to be as dark as the leaves. Uh, quite simply, they will never show up. So I'm dipping in and out of my colours here and not over blending. I'm just placing one next to the other. So in places I'm going to have pure yellow, in places I'm going to have green. And as I said, I've got two blues going on here, so we're going to get a whole range of colours. I think as well I want some areas where it's sort of pure white, sort of almost pure white sunlight coming through. So in this case I'm just going to put some clean water on. And I'm going to keep adding those colours. And the trick to this is not to over blend, really let the paint do the work. So although I'm keeping it light around the edges of the leaves here, when I come to this bit here, I'm actually going to have um, a petal here, a white petal. The petal's got a white edge there. So I don't want to go um, too light there. I want to go a little bit darker there. So I'm just going to get a little bit of Prussian and I'm actually just going to mix up some green with that so I can just start dropping a little bit of that in. What I'm looking for all the time is tonal contrast and drama in my paintings. Now, I want to be careful of this edge over here. As soon as that dries, it'll sit in that sort of shape. So even if I don't have time to paint it immediately, what I'm going to go and do is just um, just put some clean water along that edge so it doesn't get a chance to dry out and I still get to control it. So now I'm going back to these edges where it's more leaf so that I'm not going too, too dark there so that the leaves will eventually show up. And just to keep that nice and light, I'm just going to go around there with clean water. Now you see that I'm using a fairly large paintbrush and this is on purpose because it's just easier to apply paint quickly it holds a lot of water so the brush isn't going to dry out I'm not going to get those nasty sort of dry brush effects which are only a good idea if you're doing them on purpose I still want to keep a little bit dark near the edge of that flower so again I'm just going to go in with a tiny bit of the cerulean blue here and you can see this beautiful um, textured effect that we're building up. It's almost effortless, isn't it? So I'm just going to continue working down on this area here. Now, in a little while, when I come up to this edge again here, I'm going to go to the other side of this stalk. And um, I want to make sure that I continue over. So if I've got bright yellow here, I want to go with bright yellow over the other side. So the trick to this kind of background, especially important if you're doing a sky or clouds or something like that, it's really important that um, you continue. When you jump from one area to the next, that you continue a bit of the colour that sort of goes into that area so that it looks like the background just sits behind what's in the foreground. You don't want it to end up with a load of um, sort of abstract areas and um, you know nothing really hangs together. You want it just to look as if it's all going, whatever it is, even if it's loose like this, you can't see particular shapes. You want it to look as if it's just naturally behind things. So this is kind of, um, you know, this is the way of watercolor painting. If it were oil painting, you could paint the background and then paint the flowers and the leaves on top, but being watercolor, it's far more fiendishly difficult than that. So we're actually putting the background around things, which means that when we jump from one area to the next, we really need to try and get that kind of sense of continuity. So I'm not being too careful, um, although I don't want, you know, massive sort of strange cauliflower shapes forming in the background here. Although, you know, that would be that would be another technique in its own right. But um, I'm being a little bit cleaner here. But if I get the occasional sort of background like this, well, it doesn't really matter because it's not like a flat sky that I'm trying to keep everything uh, everything perfect. So I'm going to put a bit more 
Prussian down there. Sometimes quite a good idea to go a little bit darker in corners so that the eye is not sort of, you don't want the eye, um, as people are looking at the painting, you don't want the, their eyes to be kind of almost led immediately out of the painting. So I'm just continuing down here and you see how I've kept it wet as I've gone around so I've got no sort of, um, no, uh, no drying lines going on there. And I'm going to continue round and come down here. Again, this leaf is going to be dark, so I know that around the edges here I want to go light. Now, although I've just gone down the edge, you want to be very careful not to outline shapes with your brush. You don't, for instance, want to outline this shape here and then fill in the middle. Um, it's a mistake I often see beginners doing, and I think it comes from when you're, you know, when you were kids and you had felt tip and marker pens, and to get a clean edge, you went around the edge first and then you carefully coloured the middle bit in. But that really doesn't work with watercolour painting because by the time you've gone around the edge, you've got a drying line. So don't go around the edge first, start one area and then move your way down. So from here, I started at the top and I worked down. I didn't, for, ex for example, start in the middle because if I'd started in the middle, I would literally have had to paint both sides at once. I'd have to keep both edges wet. So be methodical. It doesn't matter if you start at the bottom or start at the top, but start on one of those areas and work round as much as you can. If the shape is so complex that you think it's almost impossible to paint in one go, then just divide it up by putting another stem or another leaf in, especially if you're a beginner and you're less experienced because you're going to find it much more um, much easier that way to fill these little shapes in than you might do to keep something wet around a whole complex area like this you need to be a bit more of an experienced painter to do that so if that's not you yet don't worry at all just divide your little areas up into smaller pieces so what i've done now is i've skipped ahead and you can see i've painted the background for this um, this left hand side of the painting now i'll continue doing the same technique as i go across this doesn't have to be a done deal here. Um, I can all easily work on top of this with, I can add leaves to it. Um, you know, I might have some sort of ghost leaves in the background once I've done the darker leaves, once everything's dry. If I felt that it wasn't strong enough, I could just go over it again with another layer of color. So you can always put another layer on, but it's nearly always best to wait until your paint is dry rather than keep working on your paper while it's wet. So do work in layers, you know, place one layer on, let it dry, see how you like it and see if you need to go on top again. Some of the things that I've done to help the effect, um, I've used the cerulean blue, which is a granulating color. So you've got these nice texture effects. Always good when painting textures to have um, one or two granulating colors in the mix. It really helps things along. I've allowed a few sort of little back runs and bleeding areas, but I haven't got any sort of huge uncomfortable marks, which might have been left if I'd left large puddles on the paper. So again, I was sort of being careful to control the water levels. Another thing I've done is I've kept this sort of top left hand side um, kind of um, quite, uh, let me just move the uh, the board so you can see it a bit better there. I've uh, I've kept it quite light. I want an, I want an effect of sunlight coming through here. And then as I go across and down, I want this sort of bottom right to be um, much darker because you can see from where I've painted the flower, the light is coming in this way and the darker shadows are on this side. So I want that, uh, that darkness over there and I'll start building up more of a sort of a 3D effect there. As I've gone across towards this area here, I have actually um, started dropping in some, um, some pinks and things like that. So I'm just trying to move the board so you can see properly. So as we go around here, I've dropped in some pink. It's just the pink I was already using, this quinacridone rose. And what that does is it pushes the paint towards greys and browns and lilacs. So getting that sort of the neutralization and the coolness over here, because I don't want the whole background to be light and bright. It's just, um, it's too full on. And you want that kind of, even though I tend to paint in a stylized way, you do want that three dimensional look to it. So you want an idea of the direction that the light is coming from. Now, if you want to keep track of this painting or any others I do, I have got a Facebook, a Facebook group you can join. So the link's in the description below, so you're welcome to come across there. Um, just press the join button, I'll let you in, and um, you can watch all the paintings as they progress and get a few insider tips too. So do let me know if wet into wet technique is something you already incorporate into your own paintings, or perhaps you're going to give it a go for the first time now. I'd love to hear how you get on. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can watch another video right now.